Hello, everybody. This Tuesday, April 9th, 2013. I'm Marty Owens, and this is Capital Conversations. Tonight, we're pleased to be joined by Republican State Resident, Representative Kel Kelby Woodard. Is that right? That's right. Woodard, that's right. And Representative Paul Marker. And Nice uh, to be with you. Gentlemen, uh, welcome. And uh, I want to say, uh, is this your second term? Yes, sir, it is. Yeah, yep. right. And so you're pretty new up here. Well, yes, and we kind of uh, have a interesting second term being in uh, the minority serving from the majority into the minority different, so yeah, a little bit different a little yeah. bit different experience but uh, yeah so, it's been good so what does that mean there's not a parade of uh, lobbyists outside your door a few you less meetings a little bit more time as i tell chair marquard for me to kind of look at the forest yeah. while he's uh, concentrating on the trees i can kind of look <laughs> a little bit farther out uh, so it gives us that opportunity to do that when you're in the minority. Absolutely. And for you, this is what term? This is my seventh term. Seventh term, that's what I thought. And I've been on both sides. My first six years were in the minority, and then four yeah. in the majority, two in the minority, and back in the majority. So, yeah, um, yeah it, you, get, you get used to it both ways. That four in the minority, or six, or whatever it was, must seem yeah. like a desert now. Huh? It was like, uh, it seems like a longer. long time ago, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm glad you guys could join us tonight. Um, there's certainly a lot to talk about, so why don't we start with the governor and the DFL's bonding proposal. I'll start with you, Representative Woodard. Uh, governor Dayton released his uh, bonding proposal on Monday. By the way, if people don't know, it's an off year. You don't usually uh, put a bonding bill forward. It's not uncommon, but it's not often done uh, in a budget year. But it, Governor Dayton decided to put one forward, and the DFL followed suit today. Theirs was about $50 million more. The governor's came in at $750 million, so now we're looking at a DFL bonding proposal of $800 million. Where does the uh, GOP stand on that? Uh, what, what do you, have you had a chance to look at things? Well, you know, first and foremost, uh, it is, isn't a bonding year, and we have a budget to deal with, and, and we think that needs to be the focus, not on the bonding bill. And a $750 million bonding bill is a pretty hefty bill, uh, in the, you know, matter what year it is, if it's a bonding year or not, to put that in a non-bonding year is sort of a non-starter with us. Um, and then as we look into the bonding bill, there's a few concerns in there as well. Uh, we like roads and bridges. Uh, there's a lot of other projects in there that really don't have the statewide impact Republicans like to see in a bonding bill. So there's, uh, those are the two major issues we see both with the, the Democrats and the, and the governor's bonding bill. So Representative Marfort, why a bonding bill on an off year? It's the time is right. Uh, first of all, bonding bills put people to work, but also probably of course, more important is that it's going to fund important state projects, you know, colleges and universities. I know in the House plan there's $20 million for flood mitigation, and that's huge. And, mm -hmm. You know, the difference that's made in our communities up and down the Red River uh, Valley is just tremendous. But also contracts are coming in lower. Interest rates are lower. Mm -hmm. It's the time now to do it. And, and as Kelby mentioned, I mean, typically this is not a bonding bill but you know the economy is starting to come mm -hmm. back we've regained almost all of the 150,000 jobs that we lost during the Great Recession and now let's keep that going in a bonding bill investing in long-term state projects is the way to go well I remember a couple a few sessions back asking a couple of questions about bonding bills and jobs and how they measure creation of jobs and there's actually no scientific <laughs> measurement of jobs created and then even after the fact when you look at the metrics uh, but here's a concern um, I think citizens wonder you know at least from our standpoint you know wh wh when you create a bonding bill and you've got all these things in there as Representative Woodard mentioned whenever you guys bundle the taxpayer somehow uh, you know has to foot the bill it's really borrowing uh, bonding so I mean, why, you say the time's right, why is the time right to borrow when we're still in debt, $1.6 billion? Mm -hmm. Well, we've already calculated that into the forecast. It's about 3 3.5% three of the expenditure. So we have that, and here's its dollars that uh, goes into statewide projects. And, you know, it's helping communities, and, you know, I don't know the exact number of jobs that it creates, but you know if you've got a construction, job there's going to be new jobs there I mean there has to be some jobs that you know are needed so um, I, I think you know if you sit and wait till next year you don't know what the rates may be on the interest rates and you know throughout the state the contractors I mean they're hungry for work this gets uh, you know the companies bring money into the state that way so uh, you know you can wait but the economy is really starting to chug now and, and really get 
going to full speed. I think we have to keep it going, and a bonding bill would do that. Representative Woodard, uh, technically, if this year is an off year, then last year was a bonding year, remember? Right. And so uh, we're borrowing back-to-back -back years, and we have this big deficit. Uh, how about, what's your reaction to Representative Marquardt's Well, session? you know, Tom is right. He well, always agrees with me, by the way. I always <laughs> agree that he, he puts his uh, arguments very well formed. He's a very well formed uh, debater on this. But, um, very political. Very, that's right. Um, what I would say about that is we're very concerned about the debt. And the, one of the fastest growing pieces of the general fund budget is paying back all those other bonds that we have out there. Mm -hmm. So we're concerned about that. We're concerned that we're also taking, uh, with the DFL plan here in the House, $2.4 billion out of the economy with tax increases. Now we're saying we're going to add on top of that another $800 million in a bonding bill. Um, I don't think Minnesota taxpayers, the hardworking taxpayers of Minnesota, can really swallow that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know, we're, we're interested in talking about a good bonding bill in the bonding year next year. Uh, this is not the year for that. We need to deal with the budget now. Well, Representative Marquardt, we'll close the door on this in a minute, but first I want to ask you about, you know, uh, I guess I'm hesitant to use the term, you know, uh, poor projects, but they oftentimes label some of these uh, district projects that. Uh, there's a couple in here I want to ask you about. $47.5 million for the Bell Natural History Museum and Planetarium out at the U of M. Uh, 20 million for flood mitigation, as you mentioned, seems reasonable, but you could almost break that out and deal with it separately. What about some of the seven million dollars for, uh, for the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden, things like that? Uh, where in the whole bill, you know, does that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, fit in? You know, the bundling, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's that's always a concern. But I, I, and I'm not going to comment on what Minneapolis or St. Paul might need because if, if that's a concern, well, some legislators, right? right? Yeah, no, I understand, yeah. but you know, um, you know, Aren't you a little saying, jealous? Well, where's uh, the seven million well, for hometown? Uh, uh, for for, for uh, my hometown. Like the, it sounds like the bill overall is pretty well yeah. balanced. And yeah. believe me, I'm not going to complain about twenty million dollars for flood mitigation project no. because we yes, have had in your we have had hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars go out in the Red River right. Valley. Yeah. And you know, this year we're looking at flooding possibly up to thirty eight feet. Yeah. Four years ago in two thousand nine, that would have been I mean well when it happened we were scrambling like mad. Now, because of all the investments made up and down the River Valley, and actually since the 97 floods, yeah. it, it's hardly breaking a sweat. So sure. when you talk about the investment making a difference and mm -hmm. saving costs, now is huge. So, you know, bills aren't going to always be perfectly balanced. And quite honest, I think that came out today, the same day we put out the education bill. So yeah. quite frankly, I've been more concentrated on the sure. education bill yeah. than that one. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen all of the breakdown. I just know some of the pieces. So right. um, I, I guess, you know, you're right. I, I mean, you, you look at that, not every bill is going to balance out. But I've heard, at least when I was talking to some of the other colleagues, it's a fairly well-balanced bill. But I can't give you the Well, that's specific. what I understand, Representative Order, that some of your colleagues have stepped up and said, you know, this took some bipartisan work to get to some of these areas. And I don't know if that bipartisan took, uh, work took shape and what they could bring home to their districts or if it meant other things, but there are some Republicans that are, are supporting a bonding bill. Um, did, was that before the caucus got together? I don't know what, <laughs> what materialized well, in that uh, meeting. But. You know, of course, uh, everybody's got an election certificate and, and can uh, talk about these bills sure. and, and have their own perspective on them, but I think uh, certainly the, the caucus itself generally believes this is not the right year for the bonding bill. Uh, and I would mention that, you know, yeah, a sculpture garden in Minnesota is not a statewide impact. Uh, those are the kinds of things that really make Minnesota taxpayers angry, that we start spending money on things like that. Mm -hmm. We might get into an agreement. I mean, we may have an agreement right here on $20 million in flood mitigation, maybe $20 million in roads and bridges. That sounds good to me. I mean, I think we could do something like that if, if this was the year uh, that we could have that compromise. But uh, to spend that kind of money on things that don't have a statewide impact and actually anger hard work in Minnesota taxpayers, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, let's uh, switch gears a little bit to something that definitely does, uh, I think, get the ire up some Minnesotans, and that is the this Viking Stadium <laughs> thing. Uh, you know, pull, electronic poll tabs aren't adding up <coughs> now, and you folks are having to try to come up with some creative solutions, mm -hmm. and it appears now that um, Racino is back on the table for a second, and now that's back off, and whatever the creative ideas are around that, it looks like before we start to, uh, you know, hand over money to the stadium folks, billionaires who are building their, you know, playgrounds, when are we going to address some of that? You know what I mean? I, I guess that's got some people upset. Electronic yeah. pull tabs just aren't working out, it sounds like, right? 
they're not where we want to be. And I voted for the Viking Stadium mm -hmm. last year. And oh, your I, name's somewhere I, up on yes, it. Yes, yes. <laughs> no. And and you know, I and How I. How did they take that in your district, by the way? It it, it was a non-issue. Oh, it was it? Okay. Yes, it, it really Figured was. Figured you guys were done with it. Yeah, and I think, and that's, the, and that's the focus right now. I think whether or not you voted yes or no on it, I think the state has said, okay, the deal was made last yeah. year. Let's mm -hmm. proceed with that. So now let's make it work. And I agree. I mean, it looks right now like the e-poll tabs are not <laughs> doing what they need to do. They're, you know, well, they're hard to use, right? They're, yeah, well, I, to think, use them? I think most people still like the, yeah, you know, use the, the, paper, yes, right? use the paper. And, mm -hmm. and I think they were counting on a lot of the younger generation to do that. And that's not their yeah. thing. But... The, the point being, first of all, I wouldn't panic yet. No, you I need mean, to bundle think, it with angry birds. They well, then we can get all that. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't panic on this yet. You know, there's yet. a little more time uh, on this. But I do think, you know, mm -hmm. as a state, we've got to look at uh, some fallback plans. Because Plan some B. of, the, some of the plans that were the fallback um, depend on the stadium, like the sweet boxes and yeah. some of the other things once the stadium's up and running. So we don't have that. But I know the tax committee will probably uh, be looking at some of those things, possibly, too. Representative Woodard, what, there's been talk about dipping into some of the funds for education, the legacy amendment. Uh, what goes through your head when you see those sorts of things come up? Well, uh, you know, we have to have those conversations. I think certainly taking it out of education would not uh, have any support in the <laughs> legislature. Uh, no. that's, that would not be a popular thing to do, I think. Uh, so I, I would take that one off the table. Uh, but we have to have the conversation on what we do here. I mean, we have an agreement, and we have to figure out how it's going to be funded. Um, there's all kinds of bills being proposed and being put in now that I think start those kinds of conversations. Uh, I'm on a bill that, that basically takes the $498 million bonding down to 298 and say, you know, the funding isn't coming in, so we're going to have to figure out where that $200 million comes from. Is it the Vikings, or is it, you know, we spend a little bit less on the stadium, but the money isn't there. So we do have to do something, and I think there is bipartisan recognition that uh, you know we have to do something. There was bipartisan mm. support for this Vi Viking Stadium, bipartisan opposition. <laughs> so you know the way I look at it, uh, it really isn't a partisan issue. It is an issue of we have it. Now we have to figure out how to make cigarette it work. Cigarette tax, uh, memorabilia tax, probably not going to raise. Well, no. cigarette tax isn't right. going to be the most popular. It's I guess easy, but in some ways, but. Uh, what about the memorabilia tax? No, that's not going to generate nearly the money. Either, well, right? if we're looking for a backup, I mean, I'm, I would look for something that might be sports related or user yeah, what related. About jerseys, or yeah, well, whatever. That's, I mean, that know. was in the works last year was too. It? That yeah. was something that was talked about, and and maybe some sort of a user fee on stadiums or something. Yeah. Currently, I mean, it, it's tough. I mean, as Kelby just said, I mean, you know, things like education—that's a non-starter. I mean, yeah. other things. So that's not going to be money that comes out of things we need uh, so it's it's going to be a tough one but uh, I think that a hard a sell, though? seriously uh, isn't that a hard sell when you tell people it's not going to come out of things we need and yet the yeah. taxpayer is yeah. going to foot some of the bill for this reason reasonably yeah. sure it's going to come out of something you, you're, it's you well, know, whether well, it's the general fund or whatever it is and that's why we scrambled last year to yeah. find something and really settled on a very imperfect plan and we all knew that that this is not going to be a yeah. perfect plan because a political climate is never perfect and we had yeah. a lot of things we so we looked for kind of a revenue source that wasn't considered a tax or wasn't you know the, this or that and we wound up with this, and as mm. we find out now, um, the numbers that were used probably weren't the most credible or reliable to be used, well, which... you're um, right. Now, if you didn't have the two amendments fail, you could have used this on the GOP. You could have just blamed the whole thing. Well, <laughs> <whole time. laughs> now, Paul wouldn't do like that I, because he's a reasonable... Paul legislator. wouldn't necessarily. Yeah. And like you know, I said, yeah. I voted <laughs> yes on the stadium, so... Yeah, I'm, that's true. You'd have been I'm in the same camp. Uh, okay, good. Um, we've got a couple other things I wanted to cover with you guys. Your wheelhouse is education. You both uh, are involved. Let's talk a little while. You're the chair, right? Yes. I mean, you're the man. Yeah. So well, this is your responsible. Well, I know exactly how you feel when you say, well, yeah, but uh, there's a lot to it, isn't there? Well, there is. I about K-12, yeah. higher ed? When we talk about the Kaler, education Kaler, is he coming to talk to you? Does no, no, he he's not in higher ed. No, no, no he no, doesn't. So we don't, okay. we don't get there. But, I, right. you know, Kelby and I, as we're on here, we've had just a great relationship. A working relationship Absolutely. on that committee yeah. this year. I've just been very impressed with his work and just uh, working with the committee in his role. It's been very, very good. And I, we put out a bill today, and yeah. you know, the whole focus is to put kids on the path to the world's best workforce. And we 
really we're, we're providing the tools with early education, all day kindergarten, and then yeah. giving the districts the resources to meet goals to get to the world's best workforce. And so what we're looking at are our goals of actually closing the achievement gap, attaining 100% on the graduation rates, on third grade literacy rates, on making sure kids are career. They're pretty dismal, right? Fifth well, grade we, is really yeah, bad. Yeah, absolutely. And, and career and college readiness. And we've got to set these high goals yeah. and then hold schools accountable. We've got an accountability uh, mechanism now that's going to hold schools accountable. So with, what will you with do the new in practical terms? I didn't mean yeah, to interrupt. Yeah, no, no. That's, what will that's, you a, do? that's a good question. What we have right now is um, schools are going to have to come up with a, a strategic plan for, for student achievement okay. that they have to file with the Department of Education plus hold a public well, meeting once a you year. Guys. Well, you know, <laughs> when $16 billion go out every two years, I think we can afford to put a, a, a little accountability on sure. folks yeah. to get to statewide goals. And then they actually have to, once a year, public meeting, not only review their plan, but go back and look at how they're doing in the last three years on their goals. Okay. Making, and then the uh, Department of Education working through regional excellence centers would work with districts that aren't doing and, and work them through. There isn't going to be a club. There's not going to be any cutoffs, but just working with districts to keep them going. And then ultimately there are, I mean, if you had some districts that absolutely weren't going to make it, yeah. you do have some some things at the end you can do. But okay. set the high standards, and then we've got excellent staffs, professional staffs in this state. I'd match it up with any other state in the union. Let them then do their work, hold them accountable, and I'm confident we can get there. Your thoughts? Well, uh, I would start off by, by agreeing with the chair that uh, Paul and I have a great working relationship on that committee. Uh, there has yeah. really been a long history in Minnesota of bipartisan support for education. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. are occasions yeah. where we disagree. Um, on this particular occasion, on this bill, uh, I would say there's some things in there that we really like. Um, we put $100 onto the, the per pupil formula in the last budget and the new bill does that as well because we agree that the closer we can get those dollars to the classroom, the more effective they are. Right. Um, we had a pilot project with early learning scholarships. Um, and the new bill basically builds upon that pilot. We agree with that as well. We think that empowers parents to, to mm -hmm. have true school choice, especially in the early learning areas. Um, we'd like to see, uh, you know, if it was our bill, <laughs> we, would, uh, we would do less with the Minnesota Department of Education, less with the bureaucracy, uh, less direction to our schools, and more saying we know that, you know, you have school boards, you have administrators who are trying to do their best and are are really burdened with mandates. So let's let's illuminate some of these mandates and let's give them the money where it where it actually is most effective. And we're worried about, um, and I understand the politics of this, but paying back the chef. Paul agrees yeah. we need to pay back the chef. It's not in this bill. Um, we're promised it's going to be in the tax bill. We'd like to see it, you know, paid out of existing resources rather than raising taxes. Uh, that's probably where our our biggest uh, problem will be on the mm -hmm. bipartisan piece. Is we believe we can do this. We did it. Uh, without raising taxes, we think we can do it again without raising taxes. Um, you know, that, we, we, we think that Minnesotans uh, yeah. pay enough in taxes. Yeah. Well, listen, back to bonding for a second. If you guys bring that up on the floor, don't, you need like eight Republican votes, don't you? Need 81 votes, I believe. Yes, so Seven, need, 81 minus 73 is eight. You're right. You that's, need eight votes, right? Yeah, I mean, we've good. done the calculations, but do they have them? Uh, you know, I, I would tell you that with all honesty that our caucus is focused on the budget and we've got to get that done before you know we have yeah. that conversation with members uh, and we are united on that I mean Representative Davids you referred to earlier yes. made a comment he thought it was a pretty good bonding bill um, my guess is he, well I wasn't uh, gonna out him like I just did. yeah <laughs> I will he's a good guy yeah. I got on my out of him yeah. uh, that what he's saying is it would be a good bonding bill mm -hmm. for next year okay <laughs> uh, there really has not been much support in the Republican caucus to bond this year well, we've got to take some uh, Twitter questions and, and Facebook questions in a second, but I want to ask you guys, because you guys are both small town guys, what, uh, let's throw it out here, Marquardt, what do you got on? Oh, okay. my shoe? Right, that is called a loafer. Okay, okay right, and that's and a look loafer. At the bottom of are you it. seeing this, all, Catherine? Can you get a shot here? Up on the it, that's, yeah. It's still a loafer. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Now, let's look at Representative right. Kelby Woodard's. <laughs> okay, he's fresh off 
the farm. Right. Yeah, this right. is this is. There's still frac yeah. sand on these boots. There's <laughs> frac sand. Yes. Oh, that's that's going to be. In case fun. we didn't have enough to talk about. Yeah, it. that's uh, we were gonna. Yeah, we were gonna cover that next week, but now we no. Uh, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the working nature of your attire. It's good. <laughs> and for you, Representative Marquardt, I happen to know that. Uh, Loafers aren't necessarily indicative of your style, because you're a hard as well. But <laughs> yeah. you guys come from a small town. So when you guys go back to your districts like you did in, in, uh, over the Easter break, yeah. I assume, folks coming up to you, talking to you, small town, you kind of get that uh, unvarnished, straight in your face, mm -hmm. what's going on there. What are each of you hearing? Let's start with you, Rosa Marquardt. What, what are your constituents saying to you? I actually held eight town meetings over the You were busy, Easter see? Break, so what I was saying about so the getting loafers, out the yacht, isn't so right? getting out and around and, yeah. well, it's really the bread and butter issues. You know, the budget yeah. deficit and schools came up an awful lot. Education funding, property tax relief. Um, you know, we, we had some talk about a bonding bill and then some of the, kind of some of the outside issues we've dealt with, gun control. Gay yeah. marriage certainly yeah. came up, and so yeah. it, it's it's kind of the gamut. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, but you know, one but of there's the people you trust in your town. You yes. grew up with them. Yeah. You know who they are. They're the the old guy with the farm in the corner that never told a well, lie in his life. What's he coming Mark, up to you saying? You're to you? exactly right. Yeah. And quite frankly, um, down in the basement after church on Sundays. Yes, that's a good is, spot. That's exa <laughs> exactly right. And it, it's what I call the bread and butter issues. Yeah. It, and it isn't a lot of these issues that I just mentioned that are kind of outside the guardrail. It is the, you know, the property tax relief and, and the yeah. you know, education funding and, you know, a lot of seniors on health care. And, you know, the district oh, sure. I represent, 22% are senior citizens. I mean, it's high yeah, out in rural Minnesota. It's wow. fairly, that's fairly high. Yeah. And so huge concerns there on not just health care, but even senior housing. You know, one-level housing, you, you've got a lot of seniors. and you know, two-story housing where you yeah. come in that first step and it goes to the basement or up a half a flight. I mean, yeah. and they want us, and you want to keep them in their home as long as possible, but when they have to move and can't keep the lawn and all that, you've got to also have yeah. other housing for folks. So it's these type of everyday yeah. issues for folks. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, at uh, Andy's order? Cafe in Belle Plaine and Brad's Barbershop, uh, the conversation was really on taxes. And uh, the concern that we are continuing tax increases with different fees, and it just seems mm -hmm. to, to constantly pile on our taxpayers. And there's a real concern about that and how large our government's growing versus how large people's pocketbooks mm -hmm. are growing. And that is a real concern. Uh, guns are a big issue in my district as well. Uh, lots of concern about some of the gun control bills that had been uh, introduced, and uh, I'm sure we'll still hear some of them here on the floor uh, in the next few weeks. There's a lot of concern about that. As well, so there's this uh, this sort of underlying issue of Minneapolis and St. Paul versus outstate Minnesota, and the diverging cultures that those two represent, and concern that St. Paul is is more and more representing St. Paul and Minneapolis, and less and less mm -hmm. outstate Minnesota, and the concerns of outstate Minnesota, and I think that's where you know really there's a lot of bipartisan <laughs> cooperation mm -hmm. with rural legislators that we make sure that uh, you know our issues are heard here in, in yeah. St. Paul, whether we remember the minority or the majority. You know, Kel Kelby talks about the tax issue, which is a big one, but here's a situation where we're at. We've got about a $620 million budget deficit. Mm -hmm. We owe the schools back, uh, which both Kelby and I strongly support. Well, you back. guys are already counting in new revenue yeah, about, projections. Well, I but that's about $850 million sure. right there. Okay, I mean, fair that's $1.4 some billion mm -hmm. before we even get to the starting gate yes. that we owe. And then uh, I think it's important that we invest in education. And if we can get to the world's best workforce in terms of our economy, I mean, we, we had a summit back on February 19th, and folks talked about that. If you can get there and close the achievement gap, you can lower the unemployment rate by 2%. That'd be 60,000 jobs with a better economy. Uh, you can raise the GDP by about 1.8%. Are you giving me the Bill Clinton, the... I, he was I, doing that, wasn't was he? Was I doing that? I get that where I learned that just... You got to make, you know, that's your the point. Idea. It might be in... You know, I teach too, so yeah. I like to, you know, oh, you yeah, gotta, that's you right. be kind of right. moving yeah. around. Yes, I always you talk are. You're with good my But yeah. I mean, there's, yes. so I mean, first of all, I get a starting gate, we have to raise revenue. Mm -hmm. And then if you really want, I mean, what do you buy for that? And I think if you're going to buy a top notch economy uh, in terms of jobs and productivity and that, it's worth it. Education. But, and that's why that's yeah. important. That's why 
with the education bill this year, it wasn't just going to be plopping money on the formula. If we're going to invest, people have to realize they're getting increased value. You're not getting a fight from those guys on that, though. No, 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 no. No, I'm not saying no. They're supporting I mean, this is what's important. I mean, but you've got to do something with these dollars. If we're going to ask people to raise a little more revenue from their pockets, we've got to make sure we're giving them something better of value. And I really believe the education bill that we propose today is not only going to help students, but provide value back to our communities and our state in terms of economic growth. Just a few months. <laughs> uh, right, no, I know, but uh, yeah. just, I was thinking of uh, Representative Marquardt talking about the church basement, but just yeah. a few miles up the road from where you live, there's a little dusty uh, road up there. You can take a right and go up, and there's St. Brendan's Church, and right across from there is a great ballpark to go watch a, a game in Green Island, Minnesota, and if right. you sit in those bleachers, those folks will tell you exactly oh, yeah. what it's like oh, and yeah. what, what you should do and what you shouldn't We're do. We're always on call as legislators. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that's no matter right. where you're Green Isle's a great little town. And, it is. Uh, yeah, it's supported my ancestral hometown there. But oh, if you, uh, uh, those guys up there will tell you exactly like yeah. it is, and they won't, uh, they won't mince words, Republican or Democrat. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, and they don't wear, you know, like a, a jersey or something, they'll tell you. They, <laughs> yeah. But uh, good point. Now, you guys are working together on a lot of stuff, which sounds encouraging, I think, to the viewers out there. Let's, uh, let's get to them. Uh, we've got some Twitter yeah, questions. and questions. Yeah. Um, first one actually comes from Nikki Hurdle, and her question is, what is the state legislator doing to lower rising tuition costs for college students? This is becoming something that is a real burden for people in that age range. Um, and then what advice do you have for current college students that are facing these rising tuition costs? Well, um, I, I know that's a great question from Mickey. And, and I know uh, yesterday uh, we released the higher ed bill or part of it. And I know in that bill, and I'm just going from what I read, <laughs> it, is I know there's a two year freeze on tuition. And I know Chair Pulowski has made that a huge focus of his, his getting a handle on these tuition rates. And really, he's been really putting the uh, Uni- University of Minnesota and the Minsky systems under some real scrutiny and really asking the tough question. How about basketball great. coaches? Well, that, he, he, he talked about that, that too. Yeah. He talked about that. But yeah, it, it yeah. is to get the tuition down. One thing we can do yes. in education itself in the high in the E through twelve system is try to get as much done as possible before, yeah, before you even graduate. Before right? you go. Yeah, yeah. And one, you know, PSEO or concurrent enrollment mm-hmm. are great. There's uh, we heard in committee this year there's some uh, school district Irondale and the Mountain View District that a lot of their students are graduating with an AA degree before they leave high school. How soon can they start, Representative Marquardt? I think I think they is can it tenth grade or ninth it's, or yeah, it's ninth grade now. I think yeah. ninth grade, really? Ninth grade. You can have a four-year degree when you get yeah. out there. But, and then there's uh, another uh, right now. Forty percent of all of our graduates out of our high schools, when they go on to Minsky University, are having to take remedial classes, which right. is extra cost. So, you know, that's somewhere where at least we could save some yeah. costs heading. Down yeah. the road, but yeah. that's a tough one. But we need to we need to freeze. Well, and I, I would agree with Paul. Yeah. yeah, I'd agree with Paul on uh, the fact that, that Chair Pulowski is asking the tough questions that need to be asked. Okay. We've had you know a report on the U and the bloated bureaucracy that we have at the U today. Uh, you know, we're one of the worst in the Big Ten on how much we spend on our bureaucracy versus on education yeah. in, in the higher ed system. Um, you know, we have uh, you know a, a U who can't make money off selling seven dollar and a quarter a glass beer at, to football fans. You know, they lost over a hundred thousand dollars selling beer, and I, you know, make the comment in Bell Plain that there's plenty of plenty of bar owners in, in my hometown who would love to uh, consult the Carlson School of Business on how to make money off of selling beer right. for seven and a quarter. Yeah. So we have issues at the U. Um, I agree with the tuition freeze. We have to really force uh, the U to make some of these tough decisions. And uh, that's really where we're going to hit the tuition piece. We're also big fans, and, and uh, uh, the Democrats have, have taken uh, what we did and, and doubled down on that as well when it comes to uh, the grant program. And that allows our kids uh, in Minnesota to go to the school of their choice. I think that makes a lot of sense. That then funds the student as opposed to funding the institution. And I think that is the right direction to take. People decide to go to the U. It's a great institution. You know, you get a great degree from there. Um, but you can make that decision, not the taxpayer saying we're going to fund the institution. Well, finally, oh, go ahead, Cliff. I a yeah. Follow up to that. Um, uh, a question from Northern Minnesota. Uh, his Twitter handle writes 
Um, why is there a gap of several million dollars in spending targets between the, the House and the Senate in higher education? What, what is causing that disparity? Yep, I think the House is 150, I think the Senate's like 240 closer to the governor. And, and that's um, just, I think there's more in E through 12 education in our target in the House. I think the two numbers, if you take E through 12 and higher ed, it's about the same. But oh, we put more in E through 12 and I think a little bit. They I think you're right. Yeah. I think that's, it's a little and less, otherwise yeah. the targets were pretty identical, I believe. But that, that, I think it's just where it went. And then the last one, which is completely out of left field, is um, where do you stand on marriage equality? Barry, do you want me to start? Yes, so, I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I voted no uh, back two years ago on placing you know, the one man, one woman in the Constitution because I thought it was a huge government intrusion into people's personal lives and liberties. You're talking about I, the amendment? The or? amendment, yeah, that's right. why I voted mm -hmm. no on that. Uh, however, I do think the gay marriage issue is a different issue. And first of all, we absolutely need to get the budget done first. We've got to do these bread and butter issues. Mm -hmm. uh, when those get done, then I think we can consider that. I haven't decided how I'm going to vote yet. I'm still uh, wrestling with that. But uh, I do think the gay marriage issue vote is, is different than the constitutional vote. Fair enough. And I voted for the constitutional amendment, and I would say uh, I agree uh, with Paul that you know, Minnesotans sent us here to deal with the budget and to deal with the fiscal issues that we face and some of the, the policy issues that we're looking at this, this session as well. Uh, one of the things we learned in November, uh, whether you're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, uh, is that this is a divisive issue in Minnesota and we're fairly evenly split on this as issue. And so I don't think now's the time for us to be talking about it or dealing with it. Um, I would support and I think uh, we would have pretty broad bipartisan support on reciprocal benefits uh, those kinds of things that uh, you know help alleviate some of the civil liberty concerns that we might have, um, but marriage is a is an institution that uh, people very, feel very very strongly about, and uh, so I would support uh, the traditional definition of it. Well, you mentioned tough questions earlier, so let's talk about the Fairview U of M Sanford merger. Uh, the Attorney General Lori Swanson appeared on Almanac last week and had some pretty tough things to say about what she thought about this merger. Now, for more than a century, Minnesotans have been putting their wealth, property, and other investments into the Fairview system, the U of M, and now you got Sanford, which is an outside, I think they're based in South Dakota, right? Yes. Outside, yeah. Sounds yeah. right. Wants to come in and maybe take that over. Um, thoughts about this? Boy, I'm weighing into an area I haven't really uh, thought a lot about, but I, I, I do think there's questions need to be asked before it just goes forward because yeah. it is a state entity and uh, you know there's ultimately I would think some state dollars that would flow oh, in yeah. that direction so I think the questioning is fair I just I, I don't know all the issues involved. What's your caucus? Well, uh, are they lining up on no. this? What's the, uh, okay. I mean the caucus is. But you got uh, Nino he's uh, yeah. He wants an investigation. Yeah, and I don't blame him. Senator Nino likes investigations. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, yeah and he may be right about that. And uh, I, you know, I think the the House Caucus, the House Republican Caucus, is really focused on the budget. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not like a broken record, but those mm -hmm. are the things we focused on. This is uh, another issue that we are going to have to deal with, uh, but it's a fairly new issue for us, and uh, we'll have to to really get in the details to find out what's going on there. I know. There's also an issue with, you know, the uh, the owner of Sanford is a is a U of M alum, is a Minnesotan, and uh, you know also donates money to the U. Mm -hmm. So it's not as black and white as you know South Dakota taking over our healthcare system. Uh, there is uh, you know some strong Minnesota ties there, and I think uh, you know we have to really understand it fully before you know there's a position. Yeah, I'd have to see where those donations are going to, uh, <laughs> to clear his path on that one, but. Uh, uh, well, I want to thank you gentlemen for coming on, and oh, by the way, the score welcome. is you had two pivots, you had one, yeah. you stayed on message a little bit more. I did. Uh, oh, yeah, well, you did. But, uh, well, you're the majority. Rep yeah. 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 You, you were laser focused on the budget, which, uh, <laughs> so uh, I think you Very both came good. out on a draw tonight, okay. which is good. Very good. Yeah, thank not you. That we really we both win is what you're saying. <laughs> That's right. I think Minnesotans are the real winners <laughs> here tonight, don't you? <laughs> thank you. All right, Yeah. you bet, gentlemen. 
All right, well, uh, that's it for the show tonight. I want to thank our executive producer, Catherine Laudenslager, and our media producer, Cliff Dahlberg, for their contributions tonight. And those of you who emailed us a question or tweeted us a question, we really appreciate that. Catch us tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. on KFAI. That's 90.3 FM on your dial if you need to find that. Or online at kfai.org. And check us out at mincapnews.com. Mincapnews.com. That's it for tonight. See you. Good night, everybody.